Hey, what's going on everybody? Wayne's Workshop here. And yeah, I know it's going to be one of those videos. It's going to be a how do I seal my foam videos. Now, uh, there are loads of other videos uh, on this subject matter. Uh, I can't even count them. There are so many. Uh, I just feel I should have one of these on my own channel because I've never seen anybody use this stuff and this is the stuff I use mainly. It's called All Round Medium. And so it also goes by the name of Art Medium and they use it on uh, canvases to prepare canvases before they paint on them. And I'm going, going to compare that product to the Flex Bond, Roscoe's Flex Bond uh, from Cosplay Shop and uh, just regular old wood glue. So I got these shoulder patterns uh, already prepped up so I'll zoom in here and I'll get to work. So I already prepped some of this stuff because no matter if you use Flex Bond or uh, wood glue or even what I use, the all around medium, uh, they all uh, get applied in the same way as just fill up a cup with a little bit, thin it down with a little bit of water and then just brush it on with either these normal brushes or what would be better are some foam brushes. I couldn't find those uh, anymore so I am going to resort to the classic method of the normal hairy brush. So uh, for this reason because they all use the same appliance method I already uh, made this little foam thingy and I sealed this one with the uh, flex bond and you can see there's already a nice shine on this one and I did this one with wood glue and it has a little bit less of a shine but the one I'm gonna use for the art medium uh, I'm gonna do with you so I'll show you what I do to get my armor all sealed up Yes, I just pour in a little bit. Usually what I go by is a four to one ratio. So four parts of the stuff you use for sealing with one part of water. So let's say you would use 100 milliliters of this stuff, then add 25 milliliters of water. And if you're working in small batches like this, like me now, for the sake of this video, uh, you can easily uh, pour in too much water, so one of these dropper thingies come in real handy. Now, we don't need a lot of water for this much of the medium. And then you can just stir it up. It's a little thick, so add a little bit more. I know the classic way is it should be almost like a milky substance, but I prefer it if it's just a little bit thicker. And this seems about right. So this is pretty basic, just dump it in and go over it. With these hairy brushes, you do get brush strokes. And with a foam brush, it is way less. But what you can do to minimize your brush strokes, and I got this trick from Punished Props, is you finish this layer and once this is dry, you will go over it sideways. So I did this layer like this, and then the next layer will be done like that. Now I'll just dump my brush in this uh, water cup that I had so it doesn't harden out. So first layer is dry, and you can see already kind of a shine going on here. And now we're gonna apply the second layer. So the first layer we did like this, so to you can see those brush strokes a little bit here. I'm gonna twist it a little bit and go at it like that. And that way 
you'll minimize the amount of brush strokes. I'm going to leave the camera on for this and I'm going to time lapse it later into a like a sped up version of itself just to show you uh, how fast one layer can dry. So go! So you just repeat this process going crisscross uh, for about five to eight layers I found usually to be uh, in between those uh, to be the sweet spot now if you're like me and you're impatient as can be and you don't want to wait normal time to wait for this to dry there is one little trick <clears throat> you can do to speed up this process and that is a blow dryer with one of those cold settings and you can just hold it above but um, it would be better if you made some sort of rig and duct tape this uh, to be well to be pushed so they don't have to keep holding it but cold air uh, uh, wind of cold air really uh, promotes the drying time of this So as you just saw, that is a notable difference just by a, a simple blow dryer. So if you're really impatient like me, you can do that technique. Uh, now as for uh, the glossiness of the finishes, uh, we'll start off with the most matte one and that is, let me get up close here, that is the wood glue one. Now the wood glue... Uh, the main advantage of wood glue is it's cheap and that's about it because the major downside of wood glue and it's why I don't use it but I'm still going to show you why is it is not flexible just a little bit of strain and you're going to do this when you're wearing armor it goes it flexes in it flexes out and you're moving and everything and well I'll do this stress test with all of them and I'll fold it like this and like this and you can see and you can see that oop, there's a lot of these cracks going on and I'm thinking that this isn't fully dry yet, that's why it's still flexing, but it usually really cracks even more than this. So when you compare the wood glue to let's say something like the art medium, here I can just squeeze, 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 squeeze. I can literally fold it flat, put it back, and there is nothing wrong with it. I'll, I'll try to get that shine over there. See there's no cracks, nothing. The same goes for the flex bond. I can just squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. I can fold it flat and there's nothing. If I do some inward flexing like this, that's also sometimes a problem. You can still see these creases but pop it back a little bit and you can barely even see it. So that's one of the major downsides of wood glue. It is rigid. It does not flex with your movement or it does not flex at all. And that's where the uh, flex bond and the art medium, they do flex 100%. Now let's say this is your armor piece and you've done a full day of conning and you now let's really really mess this one up and turn it inside out and you know just really go ah, go to town on it now it's ugly but it's still not cracked it's just a little dented what you can do is grab a heat gun turn it on max and slowly go over that you don't have to do this a lot 
Just a little bit. And that piece that I just folded up in my fist is now pretty much as good as new. And this, does also, this also works when you paint it. And that's the next step. I'm going to show you how these fare up with different types of paint. So let's go to the spray booth. So I'm going to give these all uh, the same treatment. I'm going to airbrush it with this Tamiya acrylic paints. It is in a royal metallic blue and this is my preferred method. I either airbrush with acrylics or enamels because these flex the best where spray paint does not flex at all. Even if you put it on a base coat that flexes like this Flex Bond or Art Medium, spray paint from an aerosol can will not flex. I'll spray one half of this with an aerosol can just to show you, but if you can manage, always try and airbrush all your armor and props. It's the most versatile and most durable method. So, the paint is dry, so let's recap real quick. We have the one sealed with wood glue. We have the one sealed with art medium, my preferred uh, choice, which I've always used. And then the flex bond, which I have never used, but I'm really liking so far. So, I showed you the wood glue one cracked under pressure. So let's see how it performs when this acrylic, which does bend, uh, reacts with a wood glue sealant under it. True test will be like this. Well, that's too bad because it does stretch with, but once I put it back, it doesn't go back and then you get this. So even with something flexible, like uh, with the acrylic paints, this is the result from wood glue. So that's, in my opinion, a no-no. It is the cheapest way uh, to use wood glue, but as you can see, this finish is horrible. So to the um, rattle can, the aerosol, and that already cracks under almost no pressure. So that's what you get with normal spray cans. So we, that's the wood glue one. That's a no-no. Let's go to the art medium one. So nice and shiny. And again, get it all flat. And it bends back perfectly look at that nothing going on there it will bend it will stretch it will last your con other other side the aerosol so this is again the aerosol spray rattle can stuff with flexible sealant the art medium and it already cracks so we can already say Never use uh, spray cans because they're just horrible. Then, the Flex Bond. I'm thinking I'm gonna get the same results as the Art Medium. Get it flat. Yeah, pretty good. This side, ah, cracks. What a surprise. So let's do this same trick, what I did, like, uh, oh no, we've been to a con all day, and bleh. Uh, it looks horrible. Let's grab that heat gun again. That should be enough. You can form it back and press it out a little bit 
and now you can already see it is looking quite nice again so that is about it for the sealing video on how I seal my foam I primarily use the all-around medium and if you can't uh, get that then this uh, flex bond stuff is uh, has really surprised me it, it, it has it almost looks and feels exactly like uh, the art medium stuff it behaves in the same way as in uh, it's 100% flexible it does not crack uh, responds well to the heat gun so uh, the biggest no-no of the test is the wood glue one it looks all cracked and uh, and really messy so just stay away from that uh, I know it's cheap it is the cheapest way to do it but if you've spent that much time on your armor or your favorite product then spend those extra few bucks on something like flex bond or all-around medium to seal your foam you don't really need an airbrush well I would advise that you really buy one even a cheap one to get you started but uh, painting them by hand if you prefer that uh, way is also a very good way to do it so that's it for this video again uh, I hope you learned a thing or two and I'll be using these shoulder patterns for my next video in where I go uh, over everything regarding masking that's masking fluid masking tape cheap tape expensive tape all the differences therein so you'll be seeing these three again real soon don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video how fast one layer can dry so go